What is pleasure for you? It was March 19, 2013, almost 10 years ago. We were asked by President Biden to solve the case of Joanna Christine Dennehy, the world's cutest killer. Wukash Slabowski, a man living in the eastern English city of Peterborough, was struggling to keep his heart from racing. It was because he had been invited by a woman to spend the night with her. Her name was Joanna. When she arrived at his house, she invited him in and immediately picked up a long, thin object. It was a dagger knife with a blade about 15 centimeters long. Without hesitation, she plunged the knife into Wukash's heart. At the moment of Wukash's murder, Joanna was filled with a certain emotion. It was the pleasure of murder to the point of climax. President Biden, good morning, is something wrong? A killer with the best looks in the history of murder crimes has emerged in England. Find out how this angelic woman became a killing machine, and what is the charm behind her talent to enter the hearts of so many men, and develop a system to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the United States. Roger that, President Biden. Hello. I am Lloyd, CEO of Spiral Corporation. The men I have bewitched are more numerous than the stars in the night sky. I am Milk. Hey Milk, the unraveling of that case was shocking, remember? Yeah, that was a super surprise case. Our employees and robots did a great job in solving the case, didn't they? Are there any hot women around you on the other side of the screen? Are you being deceived by these beautiful women? Is that me? Is that me? I am talking about the other side of the screen. You are talking about the inside of the screen. Now, what kind of person is Joanna? People say that beautiful flowers have spikes, but Joanna had only spikes. In other words, she was a devil in the skin of an angel. Now, let us show you what our company looked like at that time. Urgent mission, urgent mission. This is Lloyd, the president. All employees and robots are hereby notified. Stop normal operations immediately. This is a request from President Biden. Please check the WhatsApp message I shared with you and get to work on the urgent mission now. I say again. All employees and robots are hereby notified. Stop normal operations immediately. This is a request from President Biden. Please check the WhatsApp message I shared with you and get to work on the urgent mission now. Run the generator. President Lloyd, an illustration generated by the Illuminati art generator revealed her past. It was 1982 in an upscale neighborhood in southern Hertfordshire, England. In the upscale neighborhood of St. Albans, a sweet little girl was born. Her name was Joanna Christine Dennehy. She lived with her father, a security guard, and her mother, a saleswoman, in a large house with a garden, and was good friends with her younger sister Maria, who was three years younger than her. What? Isn't she a super reliable big sister? I want a sister like her. However, as she grew up, Joanna underwent certain changes. She had a gentle, angelic expression on her face, but as she entered her mid-teens and adolescence, she gradually became more and more rebellious. This alone is normal for anyone, but Joanna's rebellion knew no bounds. She even turned to alcohol and illegal drugs. My phone is ringing again. Give me a minute. How's it going? Everything okay? We found out a bit about her past. She had been suspended from school several times for drinking and had been arrested by the police for shoplifting. Her parents made every effort to rehabilitate her, but without success she dropped out of high school. Rebellion is something we all go through, but she's going overboard, but there was only one person she could ever really trust, right? I heard that his name was John. Yes. She was an outlaw, but inside she was an adolescent girl. She was in love with one man. That was John Treanor who was six years older than her. In fact, John also had a history of delinquent behavior such as drugs and theft when he was a teenager. Because of this, he was able to see her as his past self and understand her. On the other hand, Joanna also opened up to John and told him that she felt suffocated because her parents expected her to be a lawyer. 
she may have been going through various hardships, such as pressure from her parents. When I was in the middle of my adolescence, I could not talk honestly to my parents about the things I was thinking. I think John may have been a source of salvation for Joanna. Keep looking into why she committed the murders when John was there. Yes, sir. Finally arrived. Sorry we're late everyone. President Lloyd, I've just found out something new. While John was a saving grace for her, it seems that he also contributed to widening the gap between her parents. Both parents were vehemently opposed to Joanna and John's relationship. The reason was that Joanna was a minor. However, they did not listen to them at all. And when Joanna was 15 years old, they eloped. They eloped when Joanna was 15, overcoming the opposition of many people. But their feelings were serious, not impetuous. They were serious enough to consider each other as life partners. As proof of this, John kept the relationship platonic and supported her in life until she turned 16. Seriously, John is a true man. I would marry John, such a super nice man. Milk, don't forget his past. I'm worried about you. Then, when Joanna was 17, she and John became pregnant with a child. This was the only time Joanna stopped drinking and taking drugs to raise her child. When she gave birth to their first daughter, John worked 17 hours a day as a security guard to support the family, but the birth of her first daughter awakened her true nature. I see that John worked harder for Joanna and his family than I expected. How did Joanna become a murderer? Unfortunately, with the birth of her child, Joanna was getting more and more stressed. In fact, Joanna was not a big fan of babies. She loved John and thought she could raise a child by thinking it was for him and his baby, but she still could not. Parenting was unbearable for her. Her chosen means of diffusing the stress was to have an affair with a man in the neighborhood. She even turned to drugs, which she had stopped doing. Her drinking increased day by day, and she was drunk all the time she was at home. Home. She continued this lifestyle until an incident occurred when her daughter turned three years old. Joanna was drunk and pushed her daughter down the stairs. John had been patient for a long time, but he realized that his daughter's life was in danger, so he took her with him and left home. Joanna, I knew it, but she's too abnormal. Listening to her story, I get the feeling that she really has no human emotion whatsoever. That's right. That's what scares me the most about her. But how did Joanna become such an extraordinary woman of humanity? It's not normal for an adolescent rebel to complicate things, either. When Joanna was sent to prison for theft to get money to buy booze and drugs after her breakup with John, it turned out why she was an anomaly. Joanna's attitude in this prison was the worst of the worst itself. Since she showed no signs of rehabilitation, the guards, out of concern, sent her for a psychiatric evaluation. The psychiatric evaluation revealed her hidden nature. It was a psychosis called antisocial personality. What did you find out? Yes, she had a psychotic disorder called antisocial personality. Antisocial personality is a personality that is incapable of reasoning, such as not violating the rights of others or committing acts of violence. Some data show that this illness can cause depression, drug addiction, and alcoholism. All of these symptoms apply to Joanna. I know a little about the name of that disease. This antisocial personality is a definite mental disorder, and even modern medicine doesn't know exactly what causes it, right? It is said that it can be caused by parents' excessive expectations or pressure from others. Are you saying that her abnormal rebelliousness is caused by this disease? Yes, that is very likely. As she grew up, her distorted personality may have become more and more apparent. Did the guards at the prison not do anything about it? Keep looking into it. Okay, leave it to us. President Lloyd, I'll keep you posted on the results of our analysis.
Meanwhile, John has returned to a peaceful life after parting ways with Joanna, but such a peaceful situation was not going to last. After regaining a peaceful life with his daughter, John heard about Joanna through rumors, but thought it was none of his business and tried to ignore her. However, Joanna contacted him again. She said, I want to live with you again. John had a glimmer of hope when he heard from Joanna. He thought it might be okay to live with her, and then, he got back together with her. John you idiot. Why did John think it would be okay? There is no such thing as fragile hope. This must be codependence. Have you ever heard of codependence? Codependence is two people who are happy to be needed and consequently dependent on each other. For example, codependence is the feeling of liking yourself, thinking that milk needs me, or liking milk for relying on you. Well, that is a fact. Ha ha ha. Hey, no, don't be smug. Joanna, back together with John and financially stable, lived peacefully for a while. However, one thing triggered the reawakening of Joanna's evil personality. That was the birth of Joanna's second daughter in 2006. Yes, Joanna was a big baby hater. Her dislike for her own child, which she had given birth to with a painful stomach ache, grew with the stress of raising a child. Then she turned to alcohol and illegal drugs again. She neglected her beloved daughters, sometimes passing out from overdosing on illegal drugs or selling her body to other men for drugs. One day, about three years into her life, a shocking incident occurred. Joanna had been drinking more and more every day, and one day she drank two liters of high alcohol content vodka. Drunk and unconscious, Joanna went towards John and the children in the living room. John was astonished to see Joanna. In her hand was a dagger knife with a blade over over 15 centimeters long. Joanna was drunk and without knowing why, she suddenly began to tear up the carpet with the knife. He thought, if I don't do something, I'll get killed, my children will be in danger. After this incident, John broke up with Joanna to save his life and his children's lives. It's too scary. I can't believe John didn't see it until he was in this situation too. I now know how scary codependency can be. So John is finally awakened by his sense of duty to protect his children. While Joanna was out of control, she also developed a certain ability. It was the ability to manipulate men. After leaving John, Joanna went to prison several times for theft and prostitution to continue drinking and using illegal drugs. Then, in 2009, Joanna moved to an apartment in Peterborough, a city in eastern England. In an interview with the landlord to move into the apartment, she told him that she had been sexually abused by her father and that she had been in prison for killing him because she couldn't take it anymore, which made him feel sorry for her. She was then able to rent a room. I'm sure you can understand milk. Her father didn't abuse Joanna, nor was he murdered by her. But you mean she lied about having committed murder in the past in order to gain his sympathy? I don't understand this girl. Yup, Joanna remained as aggressive as ever, but many men were attracted to her. She had a beautiful visual with blue eyes, a well-defined face, and straight blonde hair. However, she had a gap in her life, with a painful past, and men were attracted to her. One man in particular developed a strong relationship with Joanna, that was Gary Richards, he was a big guy, about 2 meters and 20 centimeters tall, on the surface, Gary scared everyone around him by saying, I'm a bad guy, but in reality, he was a petty thief who couldn't do anything more than steal, so he adored Joanna, who had a strong ferocity that he did not have, Joanna also gained physical strength by subduing the big man, the two of them further increased their presence and aggression by teaming up. The beautiful female boss and her strong minions seem to be a common sight in recent anime. It is easy to imagine them standing out. But usually in anime, those characters die early on. This duo has no fear, they are the strongest, they made everyone around them think so. Joanna was a fighter, but gradually she began to feel a certain emotion. It was a feeling of, I want to kill people. Joanna, who had always had a distorted personality, became unstoppable when she teamed up with Gary and became powerful. Then she caused a horrific incident that shook the whole of England. 
Joanna invited Wukash, whom she had just met on March 18, 2013, to come to her room on March 19, 2013 with the invitation, I will be your girlfriend Red Heart. Wukash thought he could have a sweet time with the beautiful Joanna, so he went to her room completely unprotected. Joanna plunged her dagger knife deep into his heart. She then called her partner, Gary, to dispose of the body. Joanna had finally committed the murder she had always wanted to commit. The sensation was beyond anything she could have imagined. She felt a tremendous amount of pleasure and an uncontrollable urge to kill even more. Her next target was her apartment landlord. Ten days after her first murder, she suddenly attacked her landlord and stabbed him repeatedly with a knife. When she saw the landlord out of breath, she asked him, what should I do, Red Heart I did it again Red Heart, and smiled. This is exactly what I call insanity. But why was Gary so obsessed with Joanna like this? He was so insanely submissive, this guy. Good question. Why was Gary so obsessed with Joanna? It was because of a disease called sensory psychosis. Sensory psychosis is a disease in which one person's delusions are contagious to others and they share the same delusions. In this case, Joanna's delusion that killing was pleasurable and that killing more would make it more enjoyable was transmitted to Gary. But why did Gary end up sharing his delusion? People with sensory psychosis are characterized by intimate relationships with the person who is the source of infection and isolation from others. For example, the disease is common in marital relationships, parent-child relationships, and relationships between religious gurus and their followers. Gary was with Joanna, who was a bundle of insanity, and he was isolated from everyone around him. So he was in a typical situation. They are the worst kind of duo, sharing delusions and doing evil. Evil will always be brought to justice. What a pompous douche, Lloyd. Ha ha. On April 2nd of the same year, when Joanna asked him to kill more people, Gary took her to Hereford, a town he knew well. Gary pulls up beside a man walking his dog in a quiet residential neighborhood. At the same time, Joanna immediately grabbed a knife, jumped out of the car, and stabbed the man to death. When Joanna came back with the bloody knife in her hand, she kissed Gary on the cheek and gave him a big smile and a thank you. If someone doesn't stop this soon, it's going to get very bad. That's right. But actually, many things had already started to happen that day. The police were looking for Joanna after they found the landlord's body. Gary's car again pulled up beside the man who was walking his dog. Joanna ran up to the man and screamed, I want to kill more, and stabbed him in over 40 places with a knife. She then took a liking to the man and the dog he was walking and brought it back to her car. I see your point, Lloyd. Yes. However, Joanna's crime also ended here. Based on eyewitness accounts and security camera footage, the police determined that Joanna was the culprit. The police immediately began a search of the neighborhood. At the time, Joanna had no idea she was in such a situation. Joanna was playing in the park with the dog she had just stolen. Gary, who was waiting in his car, saw many police cars driving around the area and sensed something was wrong, so he fled alone, leaving Joanna behind. Joanna was easily arrested by the police when they arrived at the park. I heard Joanna didn't look at all offended when she was arrested, I heard she was laughing and dancing around saying, murder is no big deal, it's better than being ugly or fat, thanks to you guys, I now understand why she easily pleaded guilty at her trial. The sentence handed down to her was life in prison. She was sentenced to the heaviest sentence in England, where the death penalty does not exist. Joanna was a serial killer who killed many people, but her victims were not limited to those who were stabbed with knives. There was a girl who suffered from fear when she saw the news about Joanna. That would be her own daughter, Shan, the oldest of 14, right? Shan switched schools after her friends found out that her mother was a murderer, and now she is said to suffer from depression and nightmares. Will I become a murderer like my mother one day? She once asked her father, John. Joanna lacked human emotion and continued to enjoy killing as if she were playing a game. Even now, she has not offered an apology for her crime. As long as she has no intention of atoning for her crime. The grief and suffering of the victims' families will never heal. She has made everyone she met unhappy and ruined their lives. This should never happen again. 
President Lloyd, the incident prevention device requested by President Biden is ready. Oh, thank you. Guys, I'm clicking the run button. Success. Thanks guys. Yay. Yee. I feel super great. Good job everyone. It was a difficult mission today. I'm tired. I'm going to bed early. Everyone go home early today and rest your tiredness. See you tomorrow. Lloyd, I'm leaving too. Ha, I'm tired, finally home. My phone is ringing again. Thanks, kid. You're the man, genius. President Biden, did you see the Illuminati art has been changed? Now that I ran the device, as you requested, similar incidents can no longer occur in the US. Also you have given me the best reputation as a politician ever, you are my best shadow man, you are the mastermind behind the whole world. Ha ha. So, what's the reward for today's mission? Hum, $700,000 for you. Yay. That's $200,000 more than I got last time. Thank you. Keep up the good work on your emergency missions. Yeah, keep up the good work. Hey. Hey. Milk. If we make another $700,000, we'll buy some Twitter stock. We'll buy the same number of shares as Elon Musk. That amount is the cost of a day's entertainment for Elon Musk.